In my previous video, I've discussed my attempted proof and theorem about n-ball graphs, and some issues have been raised. The proof was only explicit enough for ball k2. But can we still speckle k3 or more complex ball graphs? That's what I'll try to address here. But first, let's get another thing out of the way that's been brought up. What about the n-ball radius? Unless there is a fixed radius per graph we can find, we also can't build the proof with n-ball graphs. If that radius would be arbitrarily small, we'd have a problem. The maximum radius that a given n-ball graph supports depends on the distance that is closest to 1 without actually being 1, which lends itself to a rather nice visualization. Assuming we can prove that proper n-ball graphs behave like their finite counterparts, we can, like this, find a working non-zero radius for every specific graph and those number of colors we're trying to use. While this radius will get very small for increasing colors and dimensions, it will always be a certain non-zero number, bringing with it a non-zero measure of space that can be speckled. For two or three colors in a plane, we only need unit distances, leaving us with diameter 1. Assuming we can get speckling out of the way, so let's get back to that. A speckled coloring means the colors are finely dispersed, totally disconnected. Clearly in ball k3 we aren't going to find a finite contradicting subgraph, just like we did in 4k2. We're looking for an iterative proof converging on zero usable measure again, but more general. So what I'm trying to show here is an equivalence relation between finite graphs and ball graphs. We want proof that monochromatic vertices yield monochromatic balls, so if speckling like this would be possible, the equivalence would be busted. For every proper n-ball graph, the balls have the same small radius and measure. I've picked the biggest possible radius for the following visualization, but any smaller radius works just as well. The bars below the balls indicate the measures of the colors and exclusion in the balls. We'll try to speckle with a single color. Clearly we can speckle the first ball, but the question is whether we can speckle the second ball with the same measure. From a glance, we might assume that having a third of the measure colored in the left ball would exclude a third in the right ball from having the same color, at least in some configurations. If it were so, then specklings would be possible. While full measure in any ball clearly excludes the full measure in other balls, in the last video we've already seen that the boundary alone already excludes other balls fully. And here the boundary only has one dimensional measure so no n-dimensional measure at all, unlike its exclusion. Let's have a detailed look at why that is. For every point in the second ball, there are two points in the boundary at distance 1, so with all of those points having the same color, this color can't appear anywhere in the second ball. Also, the boundary is already twice of what we need for full exclusion. In general, any line connecting the furthest and closest points like this will lead to full exclusion. And it's easy to see here, there exist uncountably infinitely many such lines. Now, if we speckle such a line, we actually get an accordingly reduced exclusion. With every point in the second ball being at unit distance from one point on the line, if an evenly dispersed third of those points are colored, then a third of the second ball can't have the same color. Having this speckled line, what would it take to add another point outside of that line without adding to the exclusion? The arc excluded by that point would already have to be excluded by the speckled line, but that would require this interval to be solidly colored. Contradictory to the speckling we're attempting. So, if we're trying to speckle both balls, we run into a problem very quickly. We can't prevent these speckled lines each from adding to the exclusion. Every line cuts a third out of the available measure, and after just three lines, we've already arrived at a contradiction. That's after adding three of uncountably infinitely many lines, giving us what we've seen in the first video, but much more general. The usable measure converges on zero. Such an even speckling has full exclusion, not just for a third of the measure, but any positive measure. Although we could shift the density of the points, that's merely delaying what is bound to happen after infinitely many steps, sooner or later. That rules out speckling not just for three colors in K3, but in general, and brings us back to the conclusion of the first video. Monochromatic vertices yield monochromatic balls and vice versa. Anything aside from a solid coloring per ball 
will result in over-exclusion. A ball speckled with three colors is equivalent to a single vertex having three colors. If we use that on a single ball or vertex on K3, the best we can do from there is giving a single color to the other balls of vertices, giving us an inefficient five coloring instead of three. Or so I think at this point in time at least. Thanks for watching, that's it for this one.